Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to load chart.js charts using SvelteKit and put them together in a dashboard on a website. To start off, I have a blank SvelteKit app here with Tailwind CSS installed. In my root page.svelte file, I've already pre-made the look of the site ahead of time. We just have a centered box using Flex, a fake side navigation bar, and a main area where the charts will be loaded. Also, I have some placeholder boxes to make sure the charts will fit nicely. To use chart.js features, we need to install that as well, and we can do that with npm install chart.js. In a real dashboard, we would probably load multiple pie charts, multiple line charts, and so on. So to avoid duplicating ourselves, I'm going to turn each chart type into a component where you just send it the data and the labels, and it'll just work. Let's start off by making a line chart.svelte component. In here, let's grab the HTML from the main page, that is the placeholder white bubble, and we'll eventually load our chart into this. On top in the script tag, let's list what we need imported through the props rune. We need a title for the chart, and the labels for the x-axis of the chart, then the chart data, which will be an array of numbers, a string to label this data in the legend, and finally a callback function for when we want to reload it. Below that, we need a placeholder for the HTML canvas. The canvas can change if the data changes, so it needs to be a state variable. Then a variable for the chart object from chart.js. And of course, we need to import that on top. Before we continue with the JavaScript, let's go down below and finish our HTML. Let's add a flex div that will hold the title. And a reload button. We'll put an icon in there, and I get my icons from the Tablar website, if you didn't know already. And below that, add a canvas element. We'll bind it to the canvas variable, and also add some style to make it fill the box. Now back in the script tag, we can add an onMount function, and this will set up the chart object when it first loads. This function is from chart.js. It wants the canvas first. Then an object with options. The first thing we'll set in that is the chart type. And then the data can be blank at first load as we'll set that next. Below on mount, let's add an effect rune. This will set or reset the data for us when anything in here changes. The data property wants our labels and our data set, which is comprised of the label, data, and an optional color. The dataset needs to be wrapped in a state snapshot function, though, as our new, now deeply reactive chart data variable is a proxy type when being evaluated, and chart.js expects it to just be a normal object, and this fixes that for us. And at the end, we call chart.update. Back on our page, let's replace the first chart placeholder with our new line chart component instead. We need to send it a title, the labels, data, and specify a callback function. For this first chart though, let's show an example of having static data. So on top, let's have an array of six months. And below that, a state variable that will hold our data points a little bit later. Then we'll make a function called load chart one. This will just set static data to a random set of six numbers. This data.randomNumbers function is just a helper module I made since I'm going to be generating random data for most of these examples. Outside that function, let's add on mount and call that function when the page loads. Then we can go down to our tag and add the required attributes. So we set the title, send the labels, send the static data, set the legend label, and set the reload function to be load chart one. And there you go, our first chart in our dashboard. If we click on the refresh icon, we get a new random set of numbers each time. Now for our next chart, let's have it load data from a page.server.ts file and the load function in there. I already have that file made and it already has a load function, but you can add it manually, of course, if it's missing. In that function, we can pretend to get some data from the database. Here though, I'll just generate some more random numbers. Plus, we need uh, matching labels for that, so another array with the same quantity of labels. 
and then we just send those two back. And on the page side, we can read it by adding the props rune and destructuring the data object from it. This one, I want to be a pie chart, so let's make a pie chart component. It'll be very similar to the line chart, so we can just copy and paste that file and rename it to pie chart. We need to change the type in here to pie instead of bar and add a plugin object that'll allow us to put the legend to the right of the chart instead of on top as our little white bubbles have more room in that direction. Then down below we can provide an array of colors we want instead of just a single orange color. We can remove the style at the bottom as it'll stretch out the circle if we leave it there. Back in our dashboard we can replace the second placeholder with the pie chart now and give it a title and set the labels and data to be from the data props when the page loaded. On reload though, we want to set that to a new function called load chart two. And up above, we'll create that function. And all it'll do is call and validate all in SvelteKit, which just causes the load scripts on the server files to run again. Notice how clicking on reload on this chart only causes this chart to reload, of course. Finally, let's have the next two charts come from an API endpoint. For the third one, let's make a bubble chart component. I'll copy and paste and rename the line chart for this one. And all we need to do is remove chart labels in the props, set the type to bubble, and remove labels in the chart data object. We can also do an array for the colors if we wanted it to be more colorful. Back in our page, let's create variables that will store bubble data for this chart. It will be a state variable. Then below that, a function to grab the data for it. We'll call it load chart three. This one needs to be async. And in there, we'll fetch an API endpoint we haven't created yet called slash API slash bubble. Below that, we can get the object from the response like this and set the bubble data to be the JSON bubble data object. Now we can replace our third chart placeholder by importing bubble chart setting a title, setting the data, and the data label. Finally, the reload callback will be calling load chart 3. Now we need to make that API endpoint. So let's create an API folder and routes, a bubble folder in there, and a plus server.ts file in that folder. This will contain a get method function, and in it we'll start by setting an array for our data. Bubble charts need three dimensions of data, a Y, an X, and a radius. So I'll create 50 random Y numbers, 50 random X numbers, and 50 random radius sizes. Then we can combine them and add them to our bubble data array like this. And in the end, just simply send it back. Back in the page, we just need to call load chart three when the component mounts. And now we have a bubble chart. And clicking refresh here refreshes that one only. And finally, I'm gonna speed through and quickly make a fourth chart that'll just be another line chart. But this one will call an API endpoint that returns a list of cities from a database I have and then just some random number associated with the city. There we go, that's about it. There's lots of other options you can do with chart.js. The options are just plain JavaScript, so any ideas you see on their site should work in your Svelte component. We also could theoretically condense the repeated code and HTML in our three chart components into a single parent component and build off of that so we aren't repeating ourselves a lot, but I didn't want to make this video too complicated. If you have any questions on this though, let me know, and thanks for checking this out.